Hello! Today I really want to show you how to really easily edit some of your stock photos to give it a little bit more breathing room so that you can add some copy to it. For me, I use this technique all the time. It is so easy. It doesn't involve Photoshop, although you could do it in Photoshop if you wanted to. Um, and it really helps stretch the amount of white space that I have using a stock image so that I can add whatever details I need to it. This comes in handy for Instagram stories, for Pinterest graphics, for website banners, for ad graphics. I really like it because it lets me use a stock photo so it gives my graphic a little bit more life, it looks a little more interesting, but it also keeps things really clean and polished as well and it gives me whatever space I need to add in all the details that are relevant. So. I'm in Canva right now. I'm starting out with an Instagram story shaped or sized um, canvas, and I've dropped in some text that I might wanna use on top of a photo. So in my uploads, I'm using one of my favorite new images from Social Squares. Isn't it gorgeous? Love those apricots. And I wanna use this as my background image. So there are a couple things I could do. I could stretch it to be my full background, but then it's, you know, under my text, it doesn't really leave me a lot of room to add text. It's not really readable. Um, there are just a lot of things that aren't perfect about this setup. So of course, what you could do is I could stretch this so that I do have some white space at the top or some negative space at the top, but I don't really love how that's looking either. It's not perfect. And if I keep stretching that out, the apricots just get so large, it doesn't really make sense. So here's my trick. I'm going to delete this image. I'm going to add it back and I'm going to kind of stretch it to where I think it's going to be the most appropriate size like that I think is good. So now we've got this white space at the top that we don't really know what to do with. So I'm going to add in just a plain rectangle. Actually, I'm going to add it to my background and I'm going to try my best to match the background color that is on this image. So thankfully, Canva makes this really easy for me and provides a couple of suggested colors from the photo. I'm gonna choose this lighter one. I think it looks a little nicer. So that's the first step. But now you can see that you've got this harsh line right here where the photo, where the shadows and the lights and the highlights of the photo don't match up with this just solid color in the back. So here's my next tip. Under my elements in Canva, I'm going to search for a transparent gradient. And what I'm looking for is one that starts off as a color and fades into no color. So this purple guy right here. And I am going to rotate him 90 degrees. And I'm going to change the colors here to match the color of my background. I'm changing both colors. So this first color is the color that is fully opaque and it's fading into white, which means that it's kind of casting this lightness here. And I don't want it to cast any kind of highlights. So I'm changing that white color to be the exact same blue as well. So there we go. And I'm going to stretch that. And I'm going to make a copy of him. The tough thing about Canva is that it doesn't really let you manipulate the shape of your gradients. So let's say I had just stretched this gradient square to be the full width of my graphic then I would be getting some of that gradient cast over my image and it's making these apricots look just a little dusty and a little not as um, vibrant as I want it to be. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of push this to be whatever size I think is appropriate and then I'm just going to make a copy and put it right next to it. And what you want is your gradient, the very top of your gradient where it's most opaque, to hit that joint where your image is backing up against your background. And then I'm going to send that to the back. 
And so now we have this really clean transition from a solid background color into your image. And what we're doing is we're letting this gradient kind of act as um, a nice like brush filter that's moving that transition from solid color into the actual image and all the shadows and the highlights. We're making that really natural looking. So that is my trick. I use it on everything. It is my favorite and it's so, so easy to do. Just make sure that you're matching up these colors on your gradient to be the exact same as your background color and you want your background color to match the background of the image that you're using. So you also wanna make sure that the image you're using does have some kind of background color that's really easy to replicate. You wanna avoid um, any images that have a pattern to it, although some really subtle, subtle patterns you can get away with. Um, and you also wanna avoid any images that have um, props or any items that are kind of falling off the side. So you can normally get away with this if you have one side that's completely full of negative space or if you have two sides that's really nice too it means you can kind of manipulate this photo you know down here um, or in any way that you want but it would be more difficult to do if you had something that got cut off at the top that wouldn't quite make sense now let's say really quickly that we just want to do a quick website banner i'm going to change my dimensions really quick and i'm just going to show you how we can quickly make those edits All right, so let's say I wanna blow up my image. Let's be really large and gorgeous over here. This is the exact same process. I'm just gonna rotate a few things. And something that I might consider doing is, because we're now working on a new side of this image where the light is hitting and that color is a little bit of a lighter blue gray i'm going to adjust my background color to be closer to what this color is like right here something like that just get it close because then your gradient is going to do most of the work for you still using the same concept. I don't want to stretch my gradient out too far because I don't want it to make my apricots look muddy. There you go. Now stick around. If you're working in Photoshop, I'm going to show you how to do that as well. Okay, here we are in Photoshop. I've already sized my document to be an Instagram story size and I've dropped in some text that I wanna work with. So now I'm gonna use that same image from Social Squares that I love so much. Again, just an example image, but you wanna choose something that has negative space on one or two sides. This one has it on all four sides, which is great. I'm just gonna size this image up. Stick it behind my text. All right, so oops. so now we've got our text and our image about where we want them. I'm going to start a new layer. It's going to make it easier for me to make adjustments. And I am going to select my gradient tool. And up here under my gradient editor, I am going to change my color stop on the first side and I'm just gonna use my eyedropper tool and I'm gonna match it to one of these colors at the top of my image. I'm gonna copy that hex code down here and I'm gonna paste it onto my second color stop. I'm gonna get rid of this middle color stop. Your default settings might be different than mine but what you're looking for are two color stops they need to be the exact same color and that color needs to match one of the shades at the top of your image. Now for this first color stop, you want to make sure the opacity is set to 100. And for the second color stop, you want to set it to zero. And you want to start it, you're going to drag up 
your gradient line and you want to start it just slightly below your image. And I'm going to drag it down to about halfway down my negative space. I don't want to drag it all the way down here because like you saw in Canva, it's going to start muddying up um, the top of my image. So I'm going to do something a little more like that. Okay, so what that's done is we now have a gradient that has filled up our entire top half where that white space was. And the 100% opacity is starting below that line break for our image and it's fading into the image itself. So the gradient ends here, but it's taking up all that negative space. I'm gonna move this layer down under my text and there you go. Again, super easy, and because this gradient is on its own layer, it's also really easy to kind of stretch it and manipulate it however you need to. You kind of get to set it once and then edit from there instead of um, having to constantly go back and re-edit your gradient in the gradient editor. All right, there we go. And again, if you wanted to resize this, let's say we're doing something that is a website banner. my image wherever I think it's gonna look best maybe over here I'm gonna move my text off to the side and then again just gonna manipulate my gradient a little bit. So in this case, I'm actually going to shrink it so that it takes up a little bit less room. And then I'm going to add in a rectangle or alternatively, you could just change the background of your image of your document. rid of that stroke there you go so if you didn't want to add a rectangle there what you could have done is gone to your properties layer selected your artboard just click off anywhere and you're going to change this fill to a custom color and you're going to match it to the very very top of your gradient all right and then you can make any adjustments from there i would probably change the color of these fonts uh, maybe add in some extra details whatever you need to do now you have a really seamless image to work with.